relived the yesteryear and enjoy all the fluff reprinted again in Index Imperialis Apocrypha. Spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Barrett here with you again today. Another week, another Index Apocrypha. This time we have the, the good guy version of it. Uh, with last week we showed you what do we got right here? Codex Chaotica, a, um, also an eclectic mix of older fluff from various different sources. Uh, mostly the Slaves to Darkness uh, series, or the Realms of Chaos series from the late 80s, early 90s. There's actually some of that in this one here too, but for the most part, this new book draws a lot from the first uh, set of Warhammer 40k rules, Rogue Trader era. This actually is not the very first Rogue Trader book. I, I actually forgot. I, I never bought that one, but this is the reprint soft cover from like the 90s. Um, so the actual one uh, is a hardcover. Or maybe vice versa. Nope, this is a second print. That's what it was. So this actually was not the one from the 80s. I believe that was a hard cover. This one is a soft cover from the early 90s. But nonetheless, it's the same exact material. So I was able to cross-reference a lot of it, which was uh, really neat to see there. So this book is the same size. It's roughly a uh, chaos, or roughly a codex size, about 136 pages or so. On the cover, it features the one of the artworks uh, that Blanche did of, the, I guess they call it the Beetle Pattern, Reaver Titan from uh, Adeptus Titanicus. And there's a couple different styles and patterns of reaver titans a lot of people mistake it for the warlord but i'm pretty sure that was the uh the reaver one right there i'm gonna put this one out of over here so we can talk more about this book so the table of contents really breaks down a lot about what's in this particular book here now this is a this is a great book for you know just sitting on your coffee table and now i guess there's about three of them so you got to really pick and choose like which one you want but then again i still have books down here like um the index of Stardis ones the chapter approved ones you know all sorts of great reference material that even though they're seeing they seem to make a lot of them at the time you can't really get them anymore you know like um so sometimes it's good to have those things laying around like you might remember the old uh, index of Stardis books right there that contained a lot of the fluff that really got turned into the horus heresy novels and uh, the rule set from forge world there so you can kind of see on the contents it's it's almost like a um almost an idiot's guide to the imperium i guess so to speak so you, you got the broad order overview of the imperium itself then it gets into uh, the different factions within the actual imperium like how does the Imperium work? Well, you got the Navigator class, you got the warriors of the, you know, basically the Imperial Army, the Rogue Traders that go out there and find systems, you know, get work, work the deals, get uh, Imperial tithes, you know, claim worlds, you'll let people know, hey, there's uh, there's something here now, let's go take a look at it. Then of course you've got the Assassins because sometimes people come in too hot, you gotta, you gotta take them down, you gotta take them out quick. Uh, the Abhumans, of course the Ogrens and the Rattlings and I guess even the Squats, I don't know if we're allowed to say Squats on TV, but but, uh, I said it the Imperial Guard themselves right here and then it gets into more like the Rough Riders the White Shields which are you know um, basically the cannon, cannon fodder Ogrens then it gets into specific stories inside of uh, the Imperial lore like this was uh, a, a section of story written I want to yep it was definitely from White Dwarf I want to say it was Graham Davy that wrote it Graham Davis uh, it was a really good little article and then some more stuff like just various battles and then some some Blanche artwork and huge basically pieces depicting things like the Eternity, Eternity Gate which leads to the Golden Throne where the uh, Emperor resides for the past 10,000 years. Imperial Robots, the lore of which a lot of it got turned into um, robots in the Adeptus Mechanicus and also the Mechanicum from Forge World for 30k. And then you got some Titans, the War Griffin Legion, the, um, uh, uh, one of my favorite legions of the uh, Titanicus because they got that, that, uh, that dope gray and blue. I also like the, um, uh, the, warp, the Warp Hunters as well. Those guys are uh, pretty dope. And then it gets into the Ministorum, and that's where they get into a lot of fluff taken from the Sisters of Battle book, which we just did a flashback on here also. A lot more stuff about the War of Unbelief, like um, Wars of Vindication, and then it gets into the Order of Malleus. Again, some stuff from the Realm of Chaos book, which I showed you last week when we took a look at this, because that was 
basically they created the Grey Knights in that to well, hey, if you got these demons, you gotta have somebody that fights them, right? It's like Superman basically has to have an an, an enemy or somebody that can hurt them, or else you know, well, uh, then then there's no point to even having a Superman because you don't believe it. Uh, then Necromunda, which was a great game system and a really rich kind of um, uh, vein of fluff out there, you know, those huge spire cities and the. Uh, vertical battles and things you know it was almost like Mordheim but 40k style back in the day if you had a chance to play that game it was pretty awesome and then they're talking more about the hives and things and then the gangs so it's basically all right here like 20 years worth of imperial fluff kind of boiled down condensed and into manageable chunks and presented within this book which is it's it's really cool so we can literally flip through about every 10 pages or so and just see a section now it starts uh, with the Adeptus Tycan to kiss the very first box game art right there. And then it gets into the Age of the Imperium, which, if you pull out your handy data or a trader, they actually started out with the rules at first, which, you know, Games Workshop makes certain, certain claims about not being a rules company, being a games company, or being a miniatures company. But, you know, a lot of the old rule books just jumped right into the rules. But the fluff was actually in the back. And that was in the section called Age of the Imperium, which is right here. And you will notice something very similar to here it is the age of the imperium hey look at that it starts out the same <laughs> uh of course it doesn't go very long with it being the same but basically just the main intro section here up to the point uh one other depiction of the golden throne right there which is all right into here it goes a couple let's talk about the ah where is it okay well it's a little bit different in here thought it was nope it isn't okay well i misread that one i know that piece of artwork is in here i saw it when i was flipping through reading the sections but i guess not so basically the only first 10 pages or so are the same and it gets into a lot of lore a lot of what's going on with the emperor a lot of backstory and things that you probably if you've read some of this stuff on wikipedia or 40k wiki or uh, likes you can probably like, where does that stuff even come from i never even heard of that a lot of it was from that first book there uh, more classic pieces of art from John Blanche. Actually, I think this was, this actual piece is called Pontifex uh, Maximus. Big piece of art from back in the day. And then these are actually what the old Imperial Guardsmen used to look like. Uh, let's see, where's the next section here? So it gets into the army list, when this is actually how you used to play Imperial Guard. And Imperial Guard had access to land raiders. They had jet bikes. They had uh, land speeders actually back in the day. And they took kind of took all that away. Um, either fl fluff wise or lore wise, or maybe they just didn't want to make that have to produce that much models in the early 80s. Maybe they'll come back. Who knows? But uh, apparently the lore is they recalled all the land raiders for the big uh, Siege of Terra. And then they never gave them back. So that's what you get, Imperial Guard. Take your land raiders away. I don't really know the story with the jet bikes, but they don't have that stuff anymore either. So a lot of fluff on that, fluff and background. I wanted to show you this section here. This is the stuff. That's literally what the old plastic guardsmen used to look like. And here's some stuff on the Eternity Gate and Emperor specific stuff like the Imperial Palace, some great Blanche artwork. There's the uh, Golden Throne, a lot of art you've probably already seen. And then it gets into the Imperial Robot section, which was from roughly, uh, oh, it's right here. I was going to say White Dwarf 105, but I was a little off. It's 104 from 1988. And a lot of a lot of the, what this was is they came out with models and they had to have like some sort of fluff or storyline behind it. And that's where the White Dwarfs came in because they didn't have to put out a full publication because actually back then, you know, in the 80s, uh, putting out a publication that wasn't a weekly magazine was actually an arduous process because, you know, you didn't have laser printers, you didn't have word processors, you didn't have any of that stuff. You literally had a typewriter. And if you wanted to do graphics, that was actually a lot of work. Uh, so the costs on that were really high. So it was just easier to lop all that stuff in with your weekly magazines and put that stuff out and that's how basically the game evolved and that's why could be why that games workshop puts so much of an emphasis on the white dwarf still is because you know it really was weekly magazines in, or excuse me monthly magazines were a big thing back in the 80s and early 90s before you know the technology kind of caught up with things here's the robot classes that you're probably going to recognize hey there's a uh, castellan which you know 
Uh, we got it. We got a kit for that now. Uh, this is the Vorax. I want to say class from Forge World for a Mechanicum, right there. That's uh, definitely a recognizable pattern. And there's some other ones that might not have been created quite yet, depending on what you want to see the the Colossus or the Conqueror is. Some of this stuff has been converted over to 30k Mechanicum, uh, Cataphract class, but you can kind of see some of the basis for a lot of the models out there in 30k in 40k mechanicum now here's some adeptus titanicus background and this was an iconic piece of art because you'll notice right there that's a stormbird that is basically the first artwork um in, i guess interpretation of what a stormbird was and then of course those were in the horus heresy novels and then the thunderhawk kind of evolved from there but that is an iconic piece of art that a lot of people are like oh where'd that come from it was actually part of a bigger piece which you can see right here very cool stuff to see that again and then more Jess Goodwin artworks there's the war griffin legion or the howling griffins whichever you want to call them these are great because um, you can print these out and on paper and burn them and then use a little bit of a white glue or Elmer's glue to kind of stiffen them up put a little fold on them if you want and you can attach them with chains actually to your titans themselves and the whole background with Gryphon 4 actually I guess now in the current era 40k stuff it's been overrun by the nids and the mechanic comes kind of trying to hold on to that world still uh, and push back the nids but it's uh, not looking good there which kind of sucks because that's a, that's a whole titan legion <laughs> that might go down and then it gets into more and more fluff on the Miss Storm and the whole section on the Sisters Battle. Of course, we've got this cannoness come to life in miniature form now. So it's really cool that they kind of put her in there because that was a really interesting uh, miniature come to life kind of thing. Uh, Words of Vindication, the Reign of Blood, the Age of Apostasy, all great Sisters of Battle background. And then it gets into the Necromunda sections, which take up the remainder of the, the, the book for the most part. Just some fluff on that stuff. Um, a lot of stuff here, the Arbides, Arbites, excuse me, uh, the cross section of a hive, like basically how it all works and ties in with the planet itself, uh, pollution and all sorts of crazy stuff. And then the gangs, more tech gangs, a lot of Blanche artwork and uh, Jess Goodwin concept sketches. And then the back is some stuff, some reference material from Necromunda. And that's it. It's a nice little coffee kind of coffee table book. That's uh, if you're a fan, obviously of the good guys. Uh, this is, and that aren't Space Marine specific. Well, this is probably the book for you. So really interesting kind of take on things and a little blast from the past there. If you don't possess all those books, you've never read any of that stuff. I definitely recommend picking this one up. And even if you do, you know, it's taken from a whole cross section of different books and it's always nice to have a nice little quick reference uh, guide right there if you just want to brush up on a certain section of fluff instead of digging on a whole book and uh, pouring through a, a whole section of it in uh, the original source material there so who knows what games workshop is going to come out with next they could uh, jump right on over and do you know index imperialis uh, orcs or you know uh even eldar or something like that if these books uh keep proving to be popular sellers i wouldn't see why they wouldn't so that's it for this one 